Hey everyone, welcome to part eight of our multi-part series where we're rebuilding a 2012 club car precedent from the frame up. I'm Jeff, welcome to Car Crazy. All right, well, here we go. I uh, thought I'd give you a quick look. Not much has changed um, since the last episode. I, I try to keep you all informed on every step of the way, just kind of temporarily reassembled everything so I could clean up some garage space. No, that's not the seat we're using. Uh, it's just sitting on there. If you're following me on Facebook, you would have seen uh, I picked up some seat covers, got them sitting down in there. We're probably may or may not get to that today. What I'm focusing on today is uh, the wiring. So I basically have to undo, and when I say undo, it's not a big process. Like I said, everything's just kind of sitting here. So floor mat, <clears throat> the front brow, <laughs> literally just sitting on there. But I want to dig into the wiring and go through step-by-step -step on that. And we'll spin over to the table here, and I'll show you. This is basically everything you need to make a club car precedent run other than the motor and a battery, obviously. And this probably looks overwhelming to some of you, but it's pretty simple when you break it down. Um, and I'll go through this a little bit. If you remember, or if you watched, I think it was the second video on this series, we actually took a five gallon pail and just basically threw this together and, and ran it up and down the road that way. So we do know that everything works, um, including the controller and so on. But you have your four wires that go to the battery and a lot of this is gonna get changed. This was just temporary. Um, your A1, your A2, your S1, and your S2. Those four go to the battery or to the motor. Did I say battery before? Motor. Four to your four studs on the battery, and I'll show you that. So those are going to go right here: F1, F2, A1, and A2. You'll also see a speed sensor plug hanging off that, and that is in your wiring harness right here. So those five wires go down to the to the motor. Uh, the solenoid and the controller will get mounted to the aluminum plate underneath the seat and then from the solenoid we'll have our battery positive. Got to make a cable for that. We'll have our battery negative coming off of that stud right there. And then this harness will go underneath the floorboard and come up. This one will go up to the dash and plug in right there. These two go uh, to the pedal assembly underneath the floorboard for your M core. And then this is your F and R or your forward and reverse switch. So if you simplify it in your mind, it, it's not too bad. But my goal for today is I'd like to get everything kind of mounted to the plate. The battery is going to be here in a couple days. Um, so I'm super excited to actually see this thing move under its own power again. I have a new dash panel that we're going to take all this wiring out. Some of this needs to be redone. I absolutely hate those. Don't ever use those. Do yourself a favor. Um, just to asking for trouble if you use those. Find a better way, and there is much better ways, but we'll redo some of this wiring, put our new dash panel in, and uh, <clears throat> really get this thing hopefully prepped for our battery, which is going to be here in, I think, three or four days. So. Um, we'll kind of dive in and I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process. Okay, one thing I forgot I wanted to do is clean up this pedal assembly because we're going to be getting into that a little bit today. So I thought I'd just hit it with the wire wheel and maybe the die grinder and um, we'll hit the pedals in the plastic with our trim and bumper paint. And then I'll use the gray MRO on the actual aluminum part. All 
All right, just a couple minutes with the wire brush and the whiz wheel and got that cleaned up. I'm gonna hit it with the uh, MRO. This is the dark gray, same as we used on the frame. Once that dries, I'll peel the tape off and then we'll do the black um, for our petals. Probably doing this backwards, but yeah, that's typical for me. All right, we'll let that dry for a few minutes. Thought about painting this guy too. Um, that would probably look pretty sharp. We are uh, kind of dodging raindrops out there at the moment, so I don't know. Might have to just roll with it the way it is. What do you all think? Yeah, you're right. I should probably paint it. All right, since I was totally unprepared and didn't have either one of those painted, um, we're going to let them dry. I brought them inside just because the weather is a little iffy right now. Uh, plus, they'll probably dry faster with the low humidity in here. But I think what I'm going to do is go through and get everything fastened down and at least the floorboard and the battery bucket. That way we're basically prepared. The dash is just sitting in here. Um, so I didn't put my front bolts in for the floorboard. <laughs> Nothing's bolted down. If, if you're catching on to what I'm saying... So as far as the floorboard, um, it's basically, I think it's six or eight total. And uh, I did get some new self-tappers for those, so I'll run those in. That'll hold the battery bucket and the floorboard. I've got to see if I've got hardware for that front two. Those are just short little 10 millimeters or whatever they are. I might have those. All right, even though these are self-tappers, I decided to pre-drill um, just because I'm probably not going in the exact same spot. If you remember, that bolt was broke off flush in the frame, and I didn't drill and tap it or any of that because I knew we were just going to be using self-tappers. So just kind of going around. If you look in the battery bucket, there's actually what looks like the spot where you would put it. There's like a little circle dimple in the plastic but I don't know how accurate that is because it seems like it's off from the original holes. But regardless, you can drill your own or I could just run these in, you know, being they are self-tappers, but I'm just trying to save myself a little bit of aggravation and give it a little guidance, I guess. Got my four bolts in the battery tray. Got two over there. Oh, I did put the one in there already. Okay, two more over there. And then the front one, actually, I think the front two are incorporated with the pedal assembly. So we'll wait till we get that in for the rest. I'll put the two that I just painted in the front. All right, I'm gonna let that paint cure a little bit more and uh, we'll jump in and do some of this electrical. So here's our new panel and um, basically just got to swap the electrical over. Uh, I am going to, like I said, fix this, these two scotch connectors or whatever those are called. Don't really need um, our battery gauge because I'm going to use a different one. And then it's just a matter of uh, switching our key switch over. This isn't used. That's an aftermarket thing that somebody put in, so we're not going to be using that. Hmm. Definitely got some corrosion in that key switch. I probably should order a new one because who knows what the inside of that looks like. 
So there's just a cover on there, pops out from the back, and then um, a big nut holding that ignition switch in. So let's see if we can find a socket for that. All right, looks like our socket is a one inch. You don't even need a ratchet, it's just plastic in there, so it comes out pretty easy. I'm just gonna pull these Phillips screws out and swap that over. Everything else looks like it's uh, plug and play. And there's just a nut on the bottom for the diagnostic port. Excuse my uh, sniffles. I've been fighting a cold here the last couple of days. Seems to be getting a little better now, which I'm thankful for. And then it's just a matter of reversing everything we just did. I should probably hit these with some Daytona 1 real quick. Bring the shine back to them. Just wouldn't look right with that brand new dash assembly in there and a cruddy old diagnostics port, would it? I know, I know. I'm way over the top on this build, but you know, it's going to be pretty cool when it's done, so there's that. See how much better that looks when you put a little three seconds extra effort into it? Alright, let's fix up some wiring here. And I think... <clears throat> Rather than have, you know, a butt connector here and another one here, I'm just going to cut here and replace this right to the switch. Makes a lot more sense. Right tools for the right jobs are always nice, but there's lots of ways to improvise and get by with what you got. That's what I did for many many years adapt and overcome and i grabbed the wrong crimpers <laughs> speaking of the right tool for the right job well it worked see what i mean about using the right tool even if you don't have it, it still works There's actually a better tool for this that I need to invest in. It's got a little deflector shield that goes around the back side. That way you kind of more evenly heat it. A couple of zip ties on there just like they had. If you haven't noticed, I like zip ties. I should... Uh, Invest in stock and zip ties, I think. I use a lot of them. That is complete and ready to rock in our dash assembly once we get that far. What do you think? Good call, huh? Appreciate the advice on that. All right, so now I'm kind of flying blind here. I see these holes, and I don't, I think I said that already. I don't know what type of screw we're supposed to use in there, but we're just going to, we're just going to kind of wing it. So I'm just going to unplug everything from the controller. Get you a little closer here so you can see. And uh, kind of reverse everything we did before 
get the controller mounted in, and then the solenoid, and kind of go from there, I guess. All right, well, here's what I did. Yeah, paint's still a little tacky, so I'm trying to keep that protected. Um, I was going to tap the holes and just use a quarter 20 bolt, but then I decided just to drill it out quarter inch and we'll run some bolts through. And there's three of you yelling at your screen right now saying, you idiot, why didn't you just use the right screws? And, well, I think the right way is actually like a self tapper and then the, I don't know, the sharp end points out. I don't remember. You know, I've done so many of these, you think I could remember, but I didn't want that is what I'm saying. So I'm going to have a nice bolt head on there. And uh, that's the way I'm going to do it. So there, I said it. I'm not taking it back. And because I'm impatient and can't wait for this paint to dry, that's probably going to cause all kinds of problems down the road too. So that's, it's great. I actually thought about not even ordering this plate and making my own mount with like a clear plexiglass. Being that we're going to have a big battery in there, you'd have all kinds of room to do that. Where you'd open it up and you'd see the, underneath the seat, you'd see the controller and everything. Which probably would have been kind of cool, but... For whatever reason, I just keep reverting back to the factory, you know, the factory setup on this. There's a possibility, don't hold me to this, but there's a possibility that I will convert this card over to lithium down the road and... If that's the case, we may look at doing something different then. All right, controllers mounted. All right, let's give you a little status update. Got the uh, Toe run switch in. Made myself a little custom washer for that in the back because it was missing the extra nut. And that was just easier. Um, mounted the solenoid. I'm pretty sure I'm going to run the positive cable down through here. I don't want to make that sharp bend. Um, I guess I didn't try it, but I don't think but that's what I want to do because then we're coming in. Yeah, it's basically going to have this big, huge loop in it, put a lot of stress on the solenoid. Or if I just go down here and out, something like that, that's going to be a lot better. Um, I may have to kick this even towards the back which if I do that, I still could come through here. Yeah, there's just a lot of tension. I don't think, I think I like this way better. Okay, and then that'll go out. Obviously we're not using this cable. I gotta make a new length, but basically the back of the, the small stuff is buttoned up. I wanna come through here with some, probably some Tessa tape. I did eliminate um, the extra ground wire that we're not using. In fact, I may, not may, I'm going to, as soon as I find my clippers, do a little more surgery here. And 
pull this wire completely out, maybe. That's probably, it's probably got one more zip tie on it. Well, that was a lot more work than necessary probably, but you know how fussy I am, so mazel. Do it right. I'll come through here with some, some better taping and get some of this buttoned up a little nicer. And you might notice <clears throat> some ends cut here and stuff. That's from when I ordered the harness, I ordered it. Uh, actually with the OBC or onboard computer bypassed already. Uh, that way that's done and out of our way since we're not using traditional batteries in it. All right, I'll come back through here, clean some of this up, and then we can drop it in and start measuring for some cables. All right, here's where I'm at. Um, got everything bolted in. I use this Tessa tape. If you've ever experienced uh, black tape nightmares, this stuff is really cool. It's like cloth and um, it's kind of pliable. So I don't know. I'm going to try that out. I think I like that better than the black tape. These, of course, will plug into the controller. Um, but right now I need to make my battery positive to the controller. So I'm going to, I've got my, um, my kit out here so I can make some battery cables, so we'll make a positive, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we will make um, probably the ones to our motor. We need um, our A1 or A2, so I'll have to get some lengths figured out for those. Um, speaking of lengths, I need to kind of take an old piece of wire here and try to figure out, this is a little bit tricky because you can't just go super short because you gotta have a loop in there because of that two gauge Although this welding cable wire that I use is pretty good. Um, so I think we're going to be, actually this length is probably pretty close. Um, of course I want it to be in red. So what I might do is just mock it up off of this one. And yeah, that's actually really close. Maybe even just a touch shorter. No, yeah. no, I think I'll do it probably just that same length. So let me whip up a couple cables here quick and uh, see how that goes. And there's three of you right now wondering Jeff, why in the world are you using two gauge cable on a stock controller? Well, number one, it's all I have, basically. Um, I bought this for uh, working on some other projects and it's what I have on hand. So number two, you can't go wrong with a heavy, you know, heavy gauge cable. You're not gonna have to worry about anything melting down or having any problems. And number three, if I do ever convert this over to lithium, which I probably won't, I don't know why I keep saying that, but if I do, hey, we've already got the cables. Granted, they're probably going to be the wrong length and everything else, but, um, you know, it, it, that's my reasoning, I guess, is what I'm saying. All right, we got our first cable made. First of many. All right, thought I'd bring you back here and show you what we got. So our A1 goes to the same as our positive to our solenoid, like so. So what I'm gonna do for these is put a different color heat shrink on. I think the original color, let's look. Original color for A1 is green. Now I could have used black cable for that. <clears throat> Uh, 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have green ends, but what I think we'll do, I think I'm gonna use yellow, because I might use a black one that I already have with a blue heat shrink on it for the A2, so this will help keep them separate. All right, now we've got our A1. That one's ready, let's make an A2. I think I'm gonna use this black one that I had Just shorten it just a little bit and throw an end on there. Could leave it, but it hangs down a little bit. Take a chance of it getting caught. Of course, I want a little bit slack in there for suspension movement. I think I'm just going to take maybe like two inches off of it. All right, there's what the back looks like. These are my four motor leads, um, my positive and negative for my battery, which, like I said, may have to be changed. And this one is going to plug into the motor Oops, on the speed sensor, speed sensor on the motor. So that is basically it, uh, ready to drop in and, and go with the exception of, well, now I've got my nice pretty paint all messed up here because like I said I was impatient so what I'll probably do at the end of the day is mask some of this off give it another spray and then let it sit and get good and dry before we uh, drop it in the cart for the final run still waiting on a battery so let me grab that pedal assembly I'll show you how that turned out I'll show you this pedal assembly here in just a second I got a one thing I actually remembered to paint if you can believe that, was the uh, the bracket for the brake cables. I don't know how I remembered to do that. Of course, I taped right over the top of the dirt dauber on there. Must not have been worried about that at the time. So we'll clean that off quick. Hit it with the wire brush or something here. Okay, got the pedal assembly sitting in there. I don't know why I went through the trouble of painting all that. Everything gets covered except the part where the paint is chipped off, of course, that you can see, but whatever. I know. I'm, I'm way, way too fussy. Only on this build for some reason. I'm just, I don't know, really going over the top on this one. Now we can get the bracket in there for the cables. With the floorboard in, probably not. I probably should have done that first. Oh, it's fine. We might even we might even have a parking brake in this thing again. That would be pretty incredible, huh? All right, run a couple of. Bolts in there. We have brakes again. All right. Give it a little test run here. Oh. Those down there, those go up here. Boom. Oh, those cables actually might be long enough, too. Okay. Well, here's what it looks like. A1, not A1 sauce, or A1 connector. Ooh. Hmm. I might have to redo that one. What was I doing there? 
That's a little, that's a little short, I think. And then our F1 and our F2. Okay, you following what I'm saying here? And then here's our speed sensor connector. Okay, one, two, three, four, five with the speed sensor connector. Let's jump up here. And I'll show you how this works. Let me put the camera down for a second. All right, now I've got the wires ran. Uh, F and R switch, of course, forward and reverse. That would um, tie into the body right there. Once the body is on, we've got our M core connector right here. Kind of goes in this trough like so. I brought the other one around. And this bad boy, if you remember from earlier, is going to plug into our dash which goes right here. So remember how overwhelming it looked in the beginning? Well, we just simplified it. Everything has a place, made our own connections. And uh, whew, I'm getting excited now. As soon as we get a battery, we can be cruising down the street again. Well, I think that's going to do it for part eight of the Bandit series. Thanks for coming along. Uh, got quite a bit done with the wiring. May have been a little more intense uh, for some of you, but that's why I'm trying to help maybe some of those that don't know. And I don't do everything right. I'll be the first to admit that, but hopefully it helped you in some way. And I'm um, really looking forward to part nine. We're going to dig into uh, the upholstery. Obviously, our battery is going to be here. We'll drop that in, go for a little test drive. So lots more to come. And I'm not even close to done on this build series. I, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be, but I still have a ton of ideas uh, for this cart. So hang with me, and hopefully the finished product will make sense. Uh, run on over to BigBattery.com. I thank them. They sponsor uh, this, this build, basically, and also 10 LOL. Uh, golf cart parts, bigbattery.com. That is the promo code uh, STEGI10. Save yourself 10% on your battery at bigbattery.com. Head on over to 10LOL for your golf cart parts. Uh, they've done a lot of parts on here, like our steering rack and our, our lift kit, our floor mat, uh, solenoid, wheel bearings, uh, brake cables, brake shoes, brake drums. They've done just a ton on this build. Steering wheel, I could go on and on. Head on over there, uh, save yourself 5% uh, off your purchase with my promo code Jeff100. Head on over to, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, Facebook, Cart Crazy on Facebook. You can see some behind the, uh, behind the scenes things on uh, there. I don't always post on YouTube, so it's a good idea to follow me on there if you aren't already. And uh, stay tuned. Like I said, a lot more to come. Appreciate everyone coming along. Part nine of The Bandit coming real soon. See you then.